Nebraska Preps post game with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. Yep, another week, and it is there is a lot to talk about. We heard the big voice guy. I'm with my main man, Jacob Padilla, and we are doing Nebraska Preps post game. It's a little pre, it's a little post, but it's a whole lot going on, man. I guess we got to start with recapping week number three, where it seemed uneventful on the surface, but turned out to be a little bit better. Yeah. Then uh, we maybe had bargained for in terms of quality contest. Yeah, a few of those games that we were kind of wondering about turned out to go down to the wires and some, some fourth quarter games there. Um, some, some impressive showings by the underdog, um, but for the most part, um, pretty good wins by the the favorites as well. Yeah, interesting. You want Well, let's start in Class B, right? Because uh, and, and we'll start with Aurora only because there are a lot of people's top five still, right? Yeah. They're in mine. I, I would imagine they're in yours. I know Stu had them ranked in the top five. Mike Sauter had them ranked in the coaches' poll in the top five. Pretty impressive win over Scott's Bluff. That that schedule for them, if there's such a thing as paddle tested, pretty sure Aurora's making the cut. Yeah, they uh, came out with some, some tough games right out the gate and got to, to learn a little bit about themselves and where they are coming into the season, where they needed to improve, um, what their strengths are, and now kind of easing into uh, the schedule a little bit. Obviously, um, Scott's Bluff is um, it, it's not an easy trip, but um, it really isn't. <laughs> even for even Aurora, for Aurora, yeah. <laughs> um, but they went out, got the job done, and now um, got that first one of the season and feeling good. I guess. So, how are you kind of parsing through? One and two with with Bennington and Scud or Scud and Bennington. Do you start with the defending state champs and work backwards, or do you like Bennington a little bit better at this point? So um, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm planning to get, to go see both of them on Friday. Um, I have not seen. I saw a little bit of Scud on TV and uh, on, on against that, Gross. Yeah, I um, was watching the start of that. Gross was putting up a fight pretty early on. Um, I, listen, I actually think Gross is pretty well coached. Yeah. I was telling, I was talking to our staff at Westside about that because a lot of guys watch whatever the yeah. Thursday night games are when we get home, and I Gross was well coached. They knew what they were doing, and they seemed very organized. It's probably more of a testament to Gross than it is an indictment yeah. of Scott. Yeah, um, thoughts go out to Ben Rice and his family. Just oh, horrible boy. injury. He, he's a good player. Um, he's making the plays early on in that game. Hey, but, he, he, sticky. He yeah. had some really good hands, really nice route running. He's, he's a good player. Yeah, and so Gross put up a fight early, but eventually Scott just kind of wore on him and was able to, to pull away um, as the game went on. Um, tough running game. Uh, McCoy Holton. Holton. Um, <laughs> another one of these kids were... Uh, I, I uh, first saw on a basketball court, but a uh, pretty darn good football player as well. We're trending. Um, just, just a good athlete, tough runner, um, knows how to find the hole and get in the end zone there. Um, so I, Bennington, again, I'll see them for the first time on Friday. That that was a really impressive win, um, just kind of looking at it. Uh, and it's they kind of ground Norris down a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and defensively, um, four interceptions in that game. Um, they, they Again, they rode uh, – Dylan Mostic, uh, 41 carries, uh, only for 176 yards. More of a workman like game. It was, than he it had was been, a fantastic but. job by Norris defensively. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, 41 for 171 for Mostic. I mean, he was going at a, at a clip. That 4.3 was, yards a clip. Right? Had him in the top 10 nationally yeah. in terms of rushing yards and per game. I mean, yeah. that's, uh, that's that was well under his average. Yep. And. They still uh, had enough thirty five twenty to get that done. So I, I after that win, um, w- without having seen them both, seen I, again, I just saw Elkhorn. Um, I I think um, three's fair, um, three four kind of in that range for what they've done, what they did last year, what what they've done so far this year. Obviously three and zero um, can't take that away. So I think Ben and Scott probably have a little bit more juice at this point. Uh, just based on what I saw, but um, I think you could go either way up top there. Hey, how about the Speaking of a Elkhorn, we yeah. talked about them last week where I think we would learn a lot against Waverly because we both thought Waverly was pretty good. Yeah. Um, they just keep finding a way to win. I, I guess that, I, that's what winners do, right? Winning programs win a 14-13 grinder over Waverly. I looked at that score on Friday night late nights without having seen it or watched it on Huddle yet. I'm thinking, 
Elkhorn's probably got to be pretty good. Yeah, and you can go read uh, my, my five thoughts on the game at hillvarsity.com. But, um, yeah, Waverly was playing uh, with backup quarterback. Jeez. Uh, um, uh, uh, um, starter. Cole Murray. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I didn't know if you were talking about Waverly like, yeah. or Elkhorn. But yeah, Waverly. I, uh, I was trying to dial was, in, yeah. Drawing a blank. Uh, dude, Murray. They're rocking a nice pace, uh, nice uh, pair of shades on the sideline. <laughs> He's got an injury that'll keep him out a few weeks. Got hurt right at the end of that overtime game against Scott, which um, is kind of awful to, to hear. Um, but they went in, back up Trey Jackson, and played a completely different game than they had been he all gives, season. He gives them a little he bit is, more... Uh, Dude can play pitch and catch. Yeah. 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 He is. He he can. It's it's strange to see Waverly just be able to drop back and sling the rock like yeah. that, but he allows him to throw the football. Yeah, I, I wonder it, how much uh, Elkhorn may have been caught off guard by that because it's a kid who had I don't believe that uh, attempted a varsity pass. Varsity yeah. pass. No, so I don't know how you kind of game plan for for that, um, knowing that uh, what if they knew that uh, um, Murray wasn't going to play um, due to counted for all their passing yards and more than half their rushing yards in their in their first two games. So um, big loss for them, but they came out and were impressive early on. They've got some good skill players. Um, uh, Riley Marsh is a really good receiver. Um, caught seven passes for 80 yards. Levi Powell um, did some work there. Um, so they, they struggled to get the ground game going. Um, I do like Elkhorn defensively, though. Yeah, and and that's that was kind of the story of the game because Elkhorn – they were struggling offensively all game, but they were um, just staying in it, staying in it. It was they were down the entire game. It went down, scored on the first uh, first drive of the game, um, and then after that, Elkhorn answered, took the lead, and then kept kept, uh, kept it the rest of the way from there until fourth quarter, ninety yards uh, by Henry Kroger just breaks one uh, little little uh, play to the left. Just took it and, and went, and then suddenly the, the game had completely flipped. And from that point on, Elkhorn defense stepped up majorly. Led, led by Dane Peterson, right, oh. who is by, on a good defense, by far and away the best defensive player. Yeah. And he, he, he's way good. And he was quiet early on. They were kind of going away from him. They're keying on him, trying to make sure that he wasn't involved in the play. But down the stretch, he made some big plays with, with some tackles for loss off the edge, some quarterback hurries. Um, he, he had some huge plays and really made his presence felt, especially in that fourth quarter, that end of the third, into the fourth, when Elkhorn really started to kind of turn the tide there. So if you're, if you're thinking about some order of, of, of Platt, Platt, excuse me, I won't start, I'll get to Platt Smith in a sec. It's some order of Bennington, Scott, um, Aurora, how did you do 3-5? You like Elkhorn there where they're at, or is Platt Smith for you the team, okay, this is the team that I want to see just so I can validate kind of where they are because what they're doing is pretty impressive. Yeah, um, I think you probably give um, the nod to Elkhorn a little bit there just based on what they've accomplished this year. And obviously, it's a new year, whole new players. They, they don't have a whole lot of guys back from last year, but still um, 3-0 and reigning champs. Um, you probably should give them a little bit of respect for that. Uh, even got a new coach. But, um, yeah, I think Platt Smith is making a strong case. I think that's a pretty solid top five there uh, with Bennington, Scott, Elkhorn, Aurora, and Platt Smith in some order. It's almost like Wash, Winch, repeat, 2020, 2021. Just get a dartboard. Maybe <laughs> maybe pick one. I guess we'll figure out what happens here with Bennington and Scott. That, something's got to give there. And probably the uh, – the most impressive performance uh, of the weekend in Class B was Christian Manessis for Platt Smith. Um, it's they, a real they, deal. They, they handled uh, Elkhorn North 42-17. He had 19 carries for 247 yards and four touchdowns. It's a real deal. He's it, another guy that they can feed the beast. He doesn't have the size uh, and power of, let's say, a Mastic, but he is every bit as difficult to bring down. You talk about a smaller back that runs behind his pads. Well, he is he is a handful. I I started. They drew my attention to him early last year. Hey, you've got to you've got to come see this kid. You've got to come see this kid. And Coach Zuris and that that crew do a good job yeah. of 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 really you know kind of touting their program. You know they don't get a ton of attention, a ton of love. And he's he's like, listen, you got to come watch him play. 
It's a, it's a really good football player. Now they get some help at the quarterback spot. Gives them a little versatility, too, via the air. Well, and Nate Kramer, 185 yards on seven completions, yeah. two touchdowns. Not, but that's pretty efficient. About I tell you, when you run the ball in. like that, and, and he did it yeah. a week ago, didn't have to throw it a ton, but when he does, it is for chunk plays. He's added a nice little wrinkle for that Plattsmith offense. Yeah, that's got to be really tough to defend when you've got the ability to pound, 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 and then hit you over the top. Um, that, that play action game, I would assume, is pretty tough to defend, even if you're only using it a handful of times a game. Yeah, Class B should... That was going to be pretty fun to watch. Probably, I think, one other standout performance to, to mention is Grand Iowa Northwest, 48-0. Yeah, they hammered Alliance. the Lions. They, uh, Sam Hartman, uh, dual threat, 16-21 passing for 155 yards and two scores. And carried the ball nine times for 135 yards and three more scores. Very careful to throw dirt on GI Northwest. We almost did that last year. And then they just kind of kept hanging around. We're like, gosh, who is GI Northwest? We really didn't know. It started to shake out later in the year because it was a backloaded schedule. Obviously a well-coached program. Yeah, and obviously Scott Bennington is a headliner in B this coming week, but... Uh, GI Northwest goes to Waverly, and again, even even with a backup quarterback in there, completely changed the way they play. They've got some athletes. Uh, yeah, a little and, more film on Jackson this yeah, week, though. If you're uh, if you are scouting Waverly on Huddle, trying to you know devise a game plan, it's out there now. So that'll be, I think, uh, again, the Scott Bennington. I'm sure that's the one that everybody will be at. But that I'll be looking forward to seeing the result from this GI Northwest it's Waverly game. Crazy to think in the same week you're going to get one versus two and. And the top two classes in the state of Nebraska. And it's yeah. virtually, a, I believe, a toss-up. We'll get to the preview yeah. of Bellevue West, Millard, South Area, and A as they crank it up tomorrow night. But to recap the week, level of surprise at Prep's ability to hang in there and really kind of weather the early storm and make that a highly, highly competitive game against Bellevue West a week ago. Yeah, it seems like uh, Prep's really starting to develop um, some resiliency. Obviously, they and kinda, an identity. They got humbled um, out of the gates against you guys in Week One, um, and bounced back big win against Papio. And they were down against Bell West. It looked like, well, yep, that's kind of what we expected. And then they just kept battling back. And Bellevue West shut down the, the running game. Yeah, it was a little surprise, and maybe that's the give and take, yeah. right? Because you know, I'm watching that, and I'm thinking it was crazy to see. Prep gets so many yards via the air. But Bell West, you could tell the game plan was to stop the running game, right? And yeah. they yeah. did a good job keeping that trio and in, in, in stabled up. Yeah. <laughs> Prep t- attempted 38 passes. Yeah. Um, but Thomas Lydon, receiver, stepped up. Uh, nine catches for 131 yards and a score. Um, played a big part in them kind of getting back into the game, sparking them. Um, and uh, so... That's uh, impressive resiliency from Prep to battle back. At final score was twenty eight twenty two. Bellevue West held on, but Prep made it interesting down the stretch. Um, they got to within that one score, and then um, I think was there an off, uh, onside yeah. at the end. Yeah. Um, so that that <laughs> something wonky had happened on that play. Then uh, maybe we're looking at a completely uh, different set of rankings coming in this week. But um, I think. You don't want any moral victories, especially when um, you're coming in and a game drops you to one and two. But um, I think prep is definitely heading in the right direction for sure. Yeah, we'll get to it in the preview when we talk about North and Burke. But for teams with losing records that are probably better than their record indicate, I would start with Omaha Creighton prep and probably Omaha North as well. Yeah, and they're pretty stout defensively, but... (laughs) Man, they did not have an answer for the LJ Richardson and TK Barnett combo. Yeah, Richardson, 25 carries for 197 yards and two touchdowns, which is basically what he does, um, and caught a couple of passes for 20 yards. And TK Barnett, the, the Bellevue East transfer, starting to get going now. Uh, four catches for 117 yards and two scores. Yeah, he may be, this sounds crazy to say with a couple of Division One recruits, he may be the truest of what I would call the receivers in that lineup. And that includes Davion Hall, who I believe is still nursing an injury. I know people are a little underwhelmed early. Be patient with Hall. He's uber talented, and I don't think he feels great. Yeah. But for sure with Riley, Ducker, and Helms, I Bar- Barnett may be the most polished of the bunch. Yeah. 
Um, and then you got Kyle Jordan as well. And both yeah. Paul and Jordan were really impressive. How about him against Burke? after the catch, almost like a video game uh, against Pre- Creighton Pro. So that's the thing. Like you look at Bellevue West, they've got a lot of different kinds of receivers, body types and skill sets there where you got the smaller, quicker guys with um, Jordan and Barnett. You got Halls who big um, kind of physical receiver type. And then you got the two big tight ends. Um, so they, they really stress you um, in your coverage units with uh, the different body types they can throw out there. So Miller South went in the battle of Q Street, <laughs> yeah, um, kind of doing, so. kind of doing what they do, right? It was basically though the Gage Stanger show. Well, and they got the running game going too, um, and Stanger was part of that. But they they got Nash going after um, Elkhorn South that shut him down, uh, went over 100 yards, um, and, and that's big. If they've got the dual threat, uh, Nash 14 for carries, 104 yards, and a score. Um, and Stenger, 9 for 13 for um, 195 yards and three scores. Pretty pretty efficient. Five carries for 51 yards and another score. So just ho-hum, another four-touchdown day for Stenger. But when you've got that balance between the handoff run game and Stenger out there making plays, that's when they get really dangerous. Yeah, the, that will I will be curious to see because as we've seen, uh, we saw it last week with Prep, Bellevue West very, very good against the run. Something's got to give. It will be Bell West front seven against that offensive line of Millard South. We'll see just kind of what's what as that gets sorted out. You know, Jay, Jay and Roberts out there leading the effort. He's pretty impressed. Another double digit tackle performance, I believe. Um, so, yeah, um, that's pretty salty defense. So, yeah, the Millard South line is definitely going to have to step up and play better. Um, than they did against Elkhorn South a couple weeks ago. Yeah, number three West Side in a in a dog fight. And yeah. I kind of, you know, I think sometimes people think I'm giving coach speak, but didn't really surprise me. Now the fourteen nothing, yeah, surprised me out of the gates early. But that's a big boy offense that Coach Williams and company running with money coming back, and you get one back run game, and did a lot of three three by one, and you you've got. Luke Lindemeyer, who's a, a formidable threat at the tight end spot. It's it's a tough offense to to kind of get your arms around. We were very, very good against the run. Made it tough on Caleb, but that passing game, really good quarterback play, too. Yeah, it's a I handful. Gonna, I was going to say, uh, dude can sling it a little bit. Just kind of nice. looking at um, went over 300 yards in that game. And you guys are a little banged up, right? Missing very much so. We, <laughs> very much so. It is, uh, it's a check your roster kind of. <laughs> Defense, we're kind of trying to string together. But, I mean, listen, though, everybody's going to feel sorry for defending state champs. You've yeah. got to line up and play it. And and uh, we're, we're we're a big next man up. And the way we practice is kind of built for depth. But uh, yeah, your programs will get a good lengthy look. And, shoot, we got a tough one I was gonna say, this week against Papio South. Yeah, and, uh, again, the you're going to have to be able to handle that, uh, that quarterback run game there. Yeah, um, listen, he's a really good athlete deceptively fast yep. when he gets on the perimeter. He's shifty. Yeah, and Gretna held on for a 28-21 win over Papio South, but Brady Fitzpatrick, 10 for 20 for 116 yards and scored through the air, 18 carries for 125 yards on the ground. Yeah, um, and Seen a lot of him in Phil. Yeah, and <laughs> Devin Jones, obviously a guy you're familiar with, had another good game as well. So yeah, that, that's a that, tough I duo. think his, his injury, I think, we'll see how that affects him. It probably yeah. puts more pressure on the quarterback run game. We'll yeah. see what they have behind him, but... Really good player, man. Tough, tough ankle injury, and and uh, just wishing him the best. But I was pretty impressed with. I thought this was more about Papio South than it was against Gretna because Gretna kind of did what Gretna does. Papio South just hung in there. Yeah, and um, they got the running game going. Gretna did. Uh, Mick Huber, hundred nine yards on fifteen carries and a couple of scores, and caught a receiving pass or receiving touchdown as well. Um, so they kind of kept that offense in check. They, um, kept it on the ground. Um, I, uh, Flores only had 213 yards passing. We say only, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, they, they did a good job of staying in that game, but, uh, Gretna was too, uh, tough enough down the stretch to kind of, to, to get that lead and hold on to it. How about the Southeast Grand Island game? 17-7. 
I think I'm convinced now. That's just kind of how Southeast is going to play, right? <laughs> that's and got another one on Thursday with uh, Creighton Prep. Obviously, the Millard South Bellevue West game. It's kind of the, the headliner, but uh, Greg Smith is going to be there for Hill Varsity. So I'm going to go to that Southeast Prep game. I haven't seen either one of them play yet. So looking forward to seeing that show. Um, it was again Max Butenbach leading the way, uh, and that's just Man, kind he's, of he's, he's a good player. Yeah, they they just content to, to hand it off for him and uh, let him turn, turn up the yards at 30 carries for 145 yards and through the air uh, they uh, they didn't pass it a ton but Will Barrett had eight catches for 101 100 yards and a score and they had 131 yards total passing so uh, big day for him and then Tatum Tuioti nine tackles two and a half sacks Dude is tough coming off that edge. Yeah, he is. And he's so athletic to be so strong. You know, a lot of times it's one or the other. But you're starting to see some guys like Maverick Noonan who have that combo. Yeah. Uh, Tuioti's another one in there who, I mean, he's he's kind of a thumper, but he's a really good athlete too. Yeah, and relatively quiet day statistically for uh, Jake Apple, Applegate, but you know um, he, he can make a big uh, difference anytime. You know, so the interesting thing is uh, – are you ready to establish tiers in Class A? Or as you're kind of looking at it, Class A appears to be a lot closer to Class B in terms of competitiveness. Yeah, I think even with that result um, against Prep uh, this last week, I, I still feel like it's uh, one and two. And we'll find out on, on Thursday kind of where that tier is. Uh, at this point, Millard South <laughs> this has looked really impressive. And I have a hard time seeing kind of a strong number three that's close to what I've seen. And heck, that might be, uh, they might be number one and Bellevue West might be number two. So again, we'll find out on Thursday. But after that, I think it's kind of when the tier opens up and um, Southeast is obviously in there. Um, we know they've been winning close, but th- they're winning. Um, so that they found a way to be comfortable within these grinders uh, and to get the job done. West side, we talked about you guys a little banged up, a little young, yeah. kind of figuring some things out, but still 3 0. And maybe have the most room for growth. Yeah. So when I look at, I think Bell West is who they are. I yeah. think Millard South is who they are. Southeast is interesting because they're getting better quarterback play from a year ago. You're older, you're more established in the program. I'm watching them. I don't think that's necessarily about quarterback play. I think he's, I think he's played pretty well. Yeah. Um, it's just their style. Yeah. It's it's just how they play. They they play in a way that keeps games close. Grant Allen was really well co is really well coached. Yeah. Um, so that one didn't surprise me a ton. But when you talk about like room for improvement, who's playing the youngest kids? Who's got to get healthy? I mean, we're missing a, a fair amount, <laughs> um, both offense and defense, and still kind of trying to find a way to win. In about two weeks, when I feel like we'll be kind of fully locked and loaded, knock on wood, I, I really like Westside's upside. Um, but you're right. We'll see how close one and two is. And let's not forget about Elkhorn South either. Uh, that They would like to tell you that loss to Millard South was a bit of an anomaly in terms yeah. of how it got away from them. But we saw it. I'm not so sure. But there was a beginning to that game that led me to believe, okay, it was Maverick Noonan getting off to yeah. a good start early defensively. But Miller South still couldn't really run the ball against no. Elkhorn South. And, and that is kind of, you feel pretty good about um, kind of the start of their defense. And now they got to hold up a little bit better in the back end. But bounce back an impressive 55-7 win uh, over Omaha Central. Um, now that may be the team that in two weeks has really kind of fallen out of favor in, in the public eye, which is kind of weird because we felt like that start was pretty impressive. Yeah. And they have a quarterback injury. Um, well, or, I think so. <laughs> it looked like they had somebody else, uh, a couple of different guys back there taking snaps so, this week. And you know, as been. a starter and they've still got to figure out a way to get Lloyd the ball, right? He had yeah. the, he had the, the one big pass play. Um, he's still got to get his touches, but that offense has really sputtered the last two weeks. It didn't look very good against Gretna. It was extremely disjointed, and then they took it on the chin. And they got a tricky one on Friday against Lincoln High. Uh, they got some athletes out there. Yeah. Now, and that's in – that's – is that at Beecher? Or is that uh, – home, home for Central. Okay. Yep. So Central's at home. And then, you know a tricky one? Because – I'm still not sure what to make of them, even after I watched them against Burke. 
Carney's win was pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, that we, we were talking about North Platte as one of the teams that has kind of caught our eye the first couple of weeks. Um, got two and zero start, looked impressive doing it, and they go, they go to uh, uh, go and play against Carney and uh, get hammered. Yeah, forty two fourteen. The Bearcats uh, took that one. And Vince Genitone kind of did his thing. Uh, Ten carries for seventy five yards, um, double digit tackles again, but didn't get a whole lot from anybody else. Yeah, I right, Carney's. I'm going to keep my eye on them because that's another one of those teams that historically gets better as the season wears on. So where are you starting in the previews with this week? Because there are a couple of dandies, at least on paper. Yeah, I mean, this that Thursday slate is just loaded. Like I, I can't remember. Which is kind of rare. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember having um, a, a week where you've got, again, two – um, big time matchups where obviously uh, North, North South and Bellevue West is one, um, but that that prep Southeast game I think will be really interesting too. We've seen won't be for that, the faint of heart. Yeah. That game is capable of being played in a phone booth if both coaches want it to be between Coach Catula and and uh, Coach Yonk. And we'll talk to Coach Catula Friday on the show. But uh, those are two physical football teams. Preps thirty eight passing attempts. I wonder how much of that being on film will change the preparation for Southeast because I don't believe that's who Prep wants to be. I think that's who Bellevue West allowed them to be. Yeah, and they kind of they kind of had to take what was there, um, and they really cued uh, cued in on uh, shutting down Charmar Brown. And uh, when you when you devote re, uh, resources to doing that, there are going to be some opportunities over the top. Um, you know. Gonna have a tough time shutting everything down, and Prep was able to take advantage of that a little bit. But again, obviously, that's not how they want to live. Um, they they want to start with that running game, and then see if they can shake some things loose with that. Yeah, late scoop and score from Devin Jackson and Burke to kind of uh, put that one away against Millard North. We're a little surprised at how tough Millard North played them earlier. Is that about what you expected? Is Burke's still kind of feeling their way on with getting into a routine in their depth. Yeah. Uh, Devin had two defensive touchdowns. Yeah. Not a bad week. Uh, seven tackles and a sack. Found um, a way to get his offensive touches a little bit, too. And Donovan Moody kind of carried the load on offense. 13 carries, 131 yards, a score. Kind of how I feel about him in hoops. Um, pretty pretty underrated and overlooked. He's shifty. He's got really good feet. He just needs to actually have like that that first week he was dancing all game long and just yeah. there weren't any holes anywhere for him to go. Um so he is he needs that that line to open up some some holes for him, but yeah, you it, saw if what he happened gets a, when he found the yeah, crease. Exactly. That was a house um, goal. And so I I I'm, I think that was probably about what I expected from that game as Burke continues to kind of grow, work in some younger players. Um kind of hope that that line grows, um, uh, kind of learns on the fly. Um, so good win, um, able to kind of pull away late there. Um, so um, th- at this point, you got to get any win you can. Now two and one, uh, and they're heading to North on Friday. Who tough start for the Vikings at zero and three. Yeah, tough schedule. I mean, they 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 played some really good football teams. I like I said. I mean, all bias aside, I think between them and Prep, two teams with losing records that I wouldn't be excited to play. Now, we'll see where North is coming from off, a health standpoint. Yeah, coming off a 17-20 loss to um, Lincoln Southwest. Right. Um, and so we'll see where they're at emotionally because I think that's a big deal for this team to kind of hang in there. But it should be a very physical football game. Anytime Omaha North and Omaha Burke get together, you can expect a ton of physicality. No doubt. So when you're looking at the matchups, is there one out there in which you think you're going to learn? Who do you want to know the most about that you're looking forward to? Who? That's a good one. Um, I, I, I think it is the. I think you got to go with one versus two, and in A or B or both. Well, in both, but starting with the A, um, the way Bellevue West has looked, but knowing um, kind of the weapons they have versus Millard South just kind of running over people. I I think, how often do we get a one versus two this early in the matchup? Do you, be- this early do you believe revenge is a dish best served cold? <laughs> well, Millard South's got to be kind of looking forward to this one. Oh, for sure. Um, and so I, I think that's going to be, is it 
is it a top tier? Is it one and two? Or is one of these teams clearly ahead of the other at this point? I think that's what we're going to learn on Thursday. And then, yeah, in Class B, it's kind of the same thing with Bennington and Scott. Um, that's going to be a huge game, planning to be there. Um, looking forward to seeing th- those two go at it. You hear the music. That means we are up against it. One of the best in the business. That's Jacob Padilla. We will be back next week. It should be uh, some sort of recap. This is a big one this week. And both Class A and Class B will be right there. Don't you miss us. It's Nebraska Preps postgame. I'm ODB. That's my man, JP. Nebraska Preps postgame with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. A Huda Media Production.